chance to speak to today. But uh, for those of you who haven't, I'd like to wish you all a very happy new year. I hope you enjoyed your Christmas and New Year break very much. So thank you very much for coming today on the first full working day. So uh, before I begin the meeting, I'd just like to say thank you very much to my predecessor who is sitting where I used to sit. Uh, Councillor McLaughlin over there, but I'm um, very grateful to Ken for all his uh, work. He worked closely with me on this committee as, as I was his vice chair, and I very much appreciated his advice and the style of which he managed this committee as well, and the way, in his very generous way of actually allocating the roles within the committee. So it's something I will look to be carrying on. So thank you very much to Ken for that, and, uh, and also to all colleagues for your support as well. So, so if the new boy in the blocks gets it slightly wrong today, just, just go easy on me and uh, I'm sure I'll soon rock and roll in the roll. So uh, but thank you very much for coming today. So can we start the, uh, the meeting officially? And are there any apologies for absence, please, colleagues? Councillor Dahl and Councillor Roberts. Okay. Thank you very much for that. And do we have any... Declarations of interest on the agenda items today, colleagues. No? Okay. Thank you. And I'm advised by my uh, legal eagle to my right here that I am okay to actually sanction the minutes of the last meeting, even though I wasn't the chair, I was the vice chair, I was able to approve them. So um, can I move the minutes as a meeting of the, as a correct record of the 23rd, 23rd of November 2015 be approved as a correct record? Do I have your agreement? Thank you very much for that. Are there any items arising that are not on today's agenda? There's nothing there that we want to consider. We'll move on swiftly. Okay, so agenda item four, which is the transport plan. I will sign the minutes, by the way, as you agree. Uh, transport plan for growth, uh, half yearly update. Um, colleagues have had a chance to read these papers. And um, Amy, you're coming to give a presentation on it as well. So, so we'll hand over to Amy initially, and then if there are any questions, colleagues, once the presentation has been made, I'd be very grateful. <coughs> Thank you for that.
Or not, as the case may be. Doesn't matter, Frank, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay, right. Uh, there's one point I want to raise, if I may, yeah, please. On the 4.3, which is on page 6 of the documentation, there are a number of work streams there on the left hand side, yeah. and then there's sort of by key, key bullet points, want a better expression, on the right hand side. Just wondering if it's possible, maybe to put might not be, I don't know, but I'm asking the question, but it's possible to put impact statements on those, even if they are projected impact statements, yeah. that actually look at the way in which these key objectives can actually have a positive impact in terms of the overall objectives for those who travel. And secondly, some of them have actually got uh, time frames, but not all of them. I'm just wondering if time frames could actually be put on them. I think it just makes it clear to us as members, we can say, well, look, this is the time, but that hasn't been adhered to, that has, what's the reasons for this, and yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah. But it allows us to scrutinise things more closely. Yeah, so exactly. yeah. Amy, that's great. Thank you very much. Any other questions, colleagues of Amy, before we let her go? <laughs> Councillor Carr. Thanks, Chair. In relation to the local plans, presentation. Thank you. <laughs> now, colleagues, we move on to agenda item, performance and reviews of committee tasks and finish groups. Uh, this is a fairly comprehensive document. We've also, colleagues, I'm just been made aware that there was an error apparently on the original slides. We've got a printed version now, so we've got the updated version. So, um, so be careful to peruse those. Right, on, on agenda item five, <coughs> reviews of committee. Any questions, colleagues? Specific that anybody wishes to raise. Steve, you've got to do a presentation. Uh, yeah, I'll talk to the report. Please yeah. yeah. the report. Yeah, okay. uh, no, sorry, my fault. No, no. uh, just to pick up on the Started back in July when we set the work plan. 
what, um, let's say we started off in July looking at what our corporate strategic priorities were, then in September uh, we had a meeting where we formed two task and finish groups to look at exactly what two areas out of the many that we could choose thought would be good or members thought would be useful for them to scrutinise a bit further and these were long term range strategy and programme management approach we have for Mersey Travel. Um, 23rd November was the first update report which outlined that there two sessions convened per subject and up to our five expert witnesses to be interviewed. On the second page, page 12 of the report, you can see the timetable that we had set for that, at which three of the four uh, activities have now been completed, one of which is extremely hot off the press. It was this morning that we spent two or three hours um, on the witnesses, including Frank, Mick Noon, um, Colin Deep and John Gould, we were looking on the, working on the program management office approach. So that session this morning, we had members who were on that group who asked a set of questions to each of those witnesses to try and get down to the details of exactly the best approach and the current approach that we're taking to program management uh, at the moment. Uh, my own personal view is that was quite a good session. We came up with a good set of six, maybe eight <coughs> conclusions on that of which we won't release what is coming out just yet because there's a bit more work to do while we pull them together, do a bit more assessments uh, in order to include that in the final report in March. On the other task and finish group, which is a long-term rail strategy, as you can see by the timetable, that initial meeting was held on the 3rd of December and we've got the second one on the 1st of February. That will then almost close the kind of research interview process while then the conclusions and the findings Certainly, comments on the KPI, and I will kind of put a report back in terms of our corporate performance. I may request a change, kind of looks at some more of the detail, the costings, and how much this is going to cost to do. I think the comments in the report came from requests to say that in producing the report and in producing the detail that we need to do these task groups, does take quite a lot of resource for members of staff to do it. And I think that was just a request by uh, one of the senior managers to just put that in. 
cost element, um, part of the program management office development was to um, to look at the mercy travel and then mercy travel initially. So for the uh, structure that was approved by the organisation uh, back in November, we've got out to advertise that those particular costs were picked up through some savings in the organisation that were organised on the restructure. Uh, a particular one was around asset management that was approved as a restructure and it offered a saving of 150000 towards this enhanced capability of the Program Management Office. It is fair to say that the Program Management Office is expandable, so we've only covered the first phase of this. So the first phasing of the cost, the revenue implications of strengthening that staff structure, we've accommodated within uh, budgets inside the organisation. wants to comment on this as well. Thanks, Thanks Chair. It just to remind that there's obviously these task and finish groups, so um, the um, officers who um, are working with the members on the task and finish group produce a report, and as Jane said, that will have any potential cost, and is it possible in relation to the recommendations? That will report would come back here to be agreed or not agreed, and would then go back to um, the, the organisation to review the recommendations and come back then to the Mayor's Travel Committee um, in relation to the responses and how we're looking to take them forward for final consideration. And that obviously is at the stage where financial implications um, need to be very transparent and um, take forward any specific recommendations. Any other questions, colleagues?
4.2. It says significant staff time is required to undertake these reviews. I think we're all conscious as members that we don't want to overstretch the organisation. And I'm just wondering in terms of staffing capacity within the organisation, have the capacity at this juncture to be able to fulfil these reviews adequately and look at the implications long term. So if somebody could pick that one up, I don't know whether that's Frank or Liz or whoever. Thanks very much. It, it's testing. I think it's probably the best way to, to put it, John. It, it is um, demanding on resources across the organisation, particularly at a time when the, there's a lot of other demand being placed on us as a consequence of devolution and authority of delivery. However,